what happened? You know, people think that films are kept forever somehow in some, in some imaginary library. But people in the film industry are ruthless. The corporations. If the film makes no money, it's worthless. It's, it's, it's worthless as these napkins. They just throw it away. And so, and now he's not the only film that, that, that when the film opened, nobody came. It didn't work in Australia, which was a home state. After all, it should work in, in Australia, right? And they, they, it didn't work in America. They, they, they blasted a week in some small theater in New York, and they never released it anywhere else in America. Because, you know, I, was, I told you, Americans wouldn't stand for that kangaroo hunt, and they, just, they wouldn't spend 25 cents advertising it. So, when a film fails like that, it's a piece of worthless, it's as worthless as this napkin. Right? And they throw it. Now, and so, I, like, I didn't know about this, but anyway, 25 years went by, and one of the um, Australian producers wanted to revive the film. And he said, where's the negative to the film? And everybody, it wasn't in Sydney, it wasn't, the film had been processed in London at Pinewood Studios, and it was not there. And we knew it was negative. And um, then the editor of the film was a great guy, and he, he um, made it, he, he thought the film was a kind of an Australian masterpiece, and he loved the film. And he said, I gotta find this thing. He spent 13 years of his life looking. He did not all the time. Between jobs, he would go over a period of 13 years, he was at his own expense. And he went, he went to London, he went to New York, he went to Dublin. <coughs> he went everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he went, I'll finish the story. And then, and then he finally met one guy who would work for the American company that had co-funded the film with his friends and he said, I think it's in a warehouse in Pittsburgh. And he found it. And it, he found it in two big boxes, the negative, the soundtracks, the music tracks, everything was there yeah. to make a new, new print. But the two big wooden boxes on the outside, it said in big red letters, for destruction. Had he arrived one week later, they were going to incinerate, burn the whole thing, because no one had paid the bills for the storage costs, and they were going to just burn it. And it's not just that film. When he was in London, there were nine films that were going to be burned, because the guy said to the editor, after, he said, we have nine films here. Do you know anybody of these guys, these directors? <laughs> he said, no. He said, well, we're going to burn these films. So it's all the time. This happens. The number of, if a film's not successful, it's, as far as they're concerned, it's worthless. It's garbage. And what, what, I, what I feel is women are a civilizing force. Men without women turn into beasts. <laughs> and it's true, I think. And uh, I've never, never liked hyper-masculine societies. We have them in the north of Canada, like I told you, and in Australia. Um, and... Uh, for some odd reason, we, we, we have a men have a nasty side to their character. <laughs> they drink, they drink, they fight, <laughs> they shoot, they kill. <laughs> and uh, I've and, I've and I think I've always in my film been highly critical of this kind of society. I think I'm going to tell you about it. But uh, yes, I think in First Blood, though, I think that he. The character Rambo. If you notice it in my film, he never kills anybody. Because he's had too much of killing. He's far too much of killing. He's seen too many Vietnamese killed and his friends, best friends killed in the war. So he's certainly not when he comes back to America going to kill anybody. So uh, it's, the, it's the reverse of you know, this time of the hyper masculinity being out of control.
And that's why I never did. That's why I never did the secret because they perverted the story. You know, they suddenly made him killer killing again. So my films was against the Vietnam War, was against killing, and suddenly now they're making making films about killing is good. <laughs> no, um, that's why I never directed it.